Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't believe you already buried me in likes and subscribes before this video has even started. Thanks for supporting the Garden of English. If you're here, it's for one of three reasons. You need help producing commentary, especially for your rhetorical analysis essay. You were directed to this playlist because of the Garden of English's AP Lang Ultimate Review Packet, or both of the above. Now, you may be asking, what the nonsense is an Ultimate Review Packet? It's an exclusive video series that I've created to help you review for your AP English exam. It includes exclusive videos and note guides that explore all nine units of the course and exam description, provides you with practice multiple choice for each unit, offers practice exam opportunities, and gives you resources to self-assess. It also pairs with the writing instruction that's free in my YouTube videos. If you're interested in knowing more, you can actually click on the Ultimate Review Packet link right in the description below this video. Okay, no matter who I work with, whether it's student or teachers, I'm consistently asked about helping improve commentary. For AP Lang question two, which is the rhetorical analysis essay, we've already broken down a prompt, read and annotated a piece, created a thesis, written topic sentences, and integrated evidence. And all these videos that I just mentioned are labeled and linked in the description as well. So you can check them out there. But today, I'm gonna give you a commentary toolbox to help assist you in completing the hardest task in writing. By the time we're done, you'll have some new strategies to try. To maintain continuity with my other videos, this one will provide examples in response to the 2015 AP Lang question two, which includes the excerpt by Cesar Chavez. Of course, this prompt is linked right in the description. What's about to show up on your screen will be the thesis statement I'm relying on to produce my work. It comes from an earlier video. From this thesis, we're gonna continue writing body paragraph one that matches the choice that's listed as exemplifying a civil rights icon. I'm about to bring up the topic sentence and integrated evidence to remind you of how the first body paragraph would start. Okay, in order to finish this paragraph by providing commentary, we're going to have to explain how our evidence proves the claim in our topic sentence and relates to what's said in the thesis. So in this specific case, this means that as we provide our commentary, we'll need to explain how the language in our quote proves the power of nonviolence. The audience will be willing to embrace pacifist protest. Easy, right? Some of you may be thinking easier said than done, but let me start with giving you my first tip. To provide commentary for rhetorical analysis, I want you to remember five basic words and phrases that could put you on the right path. And you'll want to remember them in this order. Because, since, thus if, furthermore, and ultimately moving the audience to. If you write five sentences of commentary and each sentence includes these words and phrases in this order, you will get better. I promise. This is because these words and phrases will automatically force you to explain how you think. When you provide commentary, you want to articulate the assumptions, stereotypes, and connotations that you know of that relate to the words that you see in the text and the author's message and purpose. You need to realize that your commentary needs to explain how your examples prove the claims of your topic sentence and thesis. So this means that you need to pinpoint exactly what words in your textual evidence relate to those ideas. So before we write our commentary, let's pick out the specific language in our textual evidence that directly correlates with proving nonviolence is powerful and then moves people to embrace nonviolence. We'll wanna highlight words like Dr. King, example, power of nonviolence, and in the real world. The reason why doing this is so important is because if this is the language that we're going to provide commentary on, these words and phrases that we picked out or synonyms of them will have to show up again in our commentary. Because we're connecting these words and phrases to nonviolent action, this idea will also have to be repeated throughout the commentary. Even though we're going to be repeating words and ideas as we write, our explanations will make it so that our commentary doesn't sound repetitive. Based on the five words and phrases that I mentioned before, I have to have the word because in my first sentence of commentary. So what I'm going to do is refer to Dr. King and connect him to the power of nonviolence and put the word because in this first line. It will look like this. Acknowledging King showcases the power of nonviolence because most Americans at the time have heard of the pacifistic civil rights demonstrations he led throughout the country that were consistently capable of producing legislative change. Notice how the word because in the middle of the sentence makes me finish it. And when I finish the sentence, I mention an assumption that most people would know of the change that he brought through peaceful demonstrations. But this commentary isn't complete because it doesn't explain how the recognition of successful demonstrations moves to action. This only hints at the power of those peaceful demonstrations. So we'll have to continue. I'm going to start my next sentence with the word since and then follow this word with another assumption. My second sentence of commentary would read as follows. Since people prefer to embrace tactics that are known to work rather than toil and futility, onlookers would be drawn to consider what made King so successful in the real world, nonviolence. 
You can tell I'm communicating my inferential assumptions because I say things like most Americans would and people prefer. These are generalized statements. Notice how I also refer to the real world success that's tied to nonviolence. So until now, I've commented on most of the language that I needed from the quote. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to start the next sentence with the phrase, thus if, to create a logical correlation of the success of nonviolence with the language and the action of the people. So my next sentence of commentary would read like this. Thus, if Dr. King was able to bring forth such gains in civil rights by embracing pacifism, it would only make sense for the audience to do it as well. Now I'm communicating how seeing King's success through nonviolence would make the people think nonviolence would work for them too. But there's more to King. His name carries connotations. That would be like emotional weight. And we need to mention this too. So now I'm going to start my next sentence with the word furthermore and it will read like this. Furthermore, in assuming that the audience most likely has a deep respect for King, referring to him allows Chavez to tie the positive emotions that are linked to this American icon with his stance on encouraging the use of civil disobedience. In this case, I mentioned an assumption about the respect the audience would have for King, and I mentioned the positivity tied to his name, and I tie that positivity of his name to his cause, civil disobedience that's peaceful. Now, the commentary we've completed is good, but it's still not done. We connected the evidence to the power of nonviolence, but we need to connect all of this to moving the audience as mentioned in the thesis. So I'm going to start my last sentence with understanding all of this would move the audience to, or some variation of that. So here's what it would look like. Understanding all of this would move the farm workers and their allies to embrace nonviolent protest due to the fact that individuals are drawn towards positive emotions and positive outcomes. So once they find nonviolent protest practical and positive, they will be more likely to embrace the tactic. And here you'll see that I put the phrase due to the fact that. This phrase can be easily substituted with the word because, and it would actually mean the same thing. I just didn't want to be overly repetitive with my word because. In this particular sentence, notice that I again reference assumptions with the words individuals. I discuss connotations when I mention positive emotions and outcomes, and I tie it to acting nonviolently. If you look in my commentary, look at how much I talk about nonviolence in some way or another, whether I use synonyms or actually use the phrase. Look at how often I reference words that showed up in my textual evidence, in that quote I chose from the piece. Look at how often I bring up assumptions and connotations. These are all the things that you need to do when you provide commentary. In any rhetorical analysis essay you write, if you follow the five steps I've made here, you'll be forced to do something similar. Now, this does take practice, but it gets easier and easier every time you try it. Let's take a peek at what our final body paragraph would look like in full. It's going to show right up on your screen. Now that's a good paragraph. You would want to make the rest of your body paragraphs look just like this. If you found this video helpful, you'll want to click that like, subscribe to the GOE, and check out what's over here so that you can find out how to write the best rhetorical analysis conclusions ever.